All right, we're going to go ahead and get started and call the meeting to order. Uh, let's start with an approval of the minutes from August. Are there any edits or amendments to that before we motion any motions to approve? I read them today. I would uh, move that we uh, approve the minutes as uh, submitted. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? <clears throat> all four on board. They're approved. Very good. <laughs> uh, let's jump. <clears throat> I don't think we have any introductions of new members, so let's jump into old business. Terry? So, um, as far as reopenings, uh, we've added uh, the exercise studio as a meditation space. Uh, no formal classes there. Um, we do have. Uh, two youth programs that have started. That's a Start Smart program. I'll go into that a little more in my staff report. Um, so I'll go into a little more detail there. Um, Senior Center, they were shooting for an October 1st opening, uh, but as it stands, I think that's still to be determined. Uh, I'll know more next week or the end of this week actually, um, but they are trying to um, finalize and jump through the hoops for requirements for opening for um, senior seniors. Uh, Arts West, I have a meeting tomorrow um, about the possibility of reopening Arts West and uh, re-employing the program specialists. Um, I can go into that a little more in my staff report. Um, I meet with uh, my boss, Tom Pyle, uh, to, to discuss what that looks like. Um, the mayor has given the recommendation and directive um, to, uh, to make that happen. So uh, I anticipate an October date. I'll know more after I speak with Tom. Uh, Friends of APR, I know that the last meeting, Shauna indicated that she wanted to put that on hold. I received a follow-up email from her that she wanted to revisit that. There was some conversation back and forth, uh, emails actually with Brandon and Shauna. Uh, so I would say we table that until um, the next meeting, but it looks like they'd like to move forward with that. Um, I know there was conversation around, you know, is it friends of APR? Is it friends of arts? Um, so we'll have to take a deeper dive into that and see what makes the most sense as far as the department as a whole. Back to you, Mark. You're muted. Of course I am. <laughs> Next one's me, uh, APR board responsibilities. Um, Terry just sent out today the draft that we had kind of put out back at the beginning of the year before COVID hit um, that breaks down and kind of outlines our roles and responsibilities as board members um, and then also gets into um, the chair's responsibility, our kind of code of ethics. And then we also added a section around at least starting to draft um, an outline of orientation for new members to this board. Um, and then it, as well as kind of an annual calendar of those, those um, milestones that we want to kind of build into each year, uh, including the November retreat um, and just kind of those checkpoints to make sure that we have some consistency um, and things as we move forward. So we had really talked about last time uh, getting this finalized by year's end. So I thought that uh, with that being sent out today, if we can have uh, board members review that uh, maybe track changes, send any edits or their thoughts uh, back to me in the next maybe week or two. Uh, I'll compile and make and update the draft so uh, we can have something to review um, and maybe in more discussion at next next month's board meeting. Um, again, trying to get this solidified by year's end. Uh, it's something that for us as a board up to this point, I think we've been fairly nonchalant in, in, in this a little bit. So 
really trying to provide some structure and consistency um, to us as a board uh, moving forward. Are there any comments or thoughts on that um, at this point? Is that a reasonable request to, to review that in the next week or so? Sounds good. All right, cool. we'll move forward. I appreciate it. Uh, park categories, Terry. So um, last meeting, uh, Alan had asked for um, defined park categories. Uh, I briefly outlined those. I have since sent him a more detailed account of those. Uh, that's something that would typically be done in the master plan to determine, um, because there's some nuances there as far as what the park acreage is, amenities, um, and those types of things. I'll work through that and bounce some of that with Alan, if that's okay, and um, try to have a draft of how our parks are categorized uh, next meeting, if that's okay with you, Alan, and the rest of the board members. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, what, what, one of the uh, the issues we'll be discussing just to bring the board up to speed is uh, Sells Park. Uh, and what that, is, and Daniel probably could speak to this better than anybody, uh, what uh, Sells Park at the end of Avon has become is a trailhead uh, for access to cells and Strouds and so on and so forth, which is great. Uh, we use it all the time. Unfortunately, there is very, very, very limited parking up there. Uh, consequently, cars are not, the other day I counted 27 cars on a Saturday afternoon, extending halfway down to Avon. And there have been some people who uh, actually have been blocked in their own homes, uh, who could not get out. So that's, that's something we're going to need to address up there uh, as it uh, gets more uh, use. Daniel, to, to that end, and I, I hate to put you on the spot, but is, is there any other um, trail access uh, on that side of town, or is that basically it? That's, there are other ones. Um, there's a trail, Cucumber Trail, which I forget the name of the road, but it's, it's behind uh, where Lamb's Garden, uh, there's like a dance studio up there. You can get on from there, but the parking's even more limited there. Uh, Hope Drive, you can get on, but you have to go around and there's really nowhere to park there. Um, so yeah, I think that's the best place. And it's interesting you mentioned that because I was up there this weekend for the first time, but I ride from home. Um, but I couldn't believe how the cars were parked down the road past houses. I thought, man, it'd be, you know, it'd be tough if you live there trying not only to get in and out sometimes, but also you just have all those people. It would be a little unsettling. I mean, most people are there to recreate and have a good time, but you just never know. Um, so I did notice that. That's well, one of the reasons we moved over on Avon in 1983 was because of Sells Park. And, and I certainly want, wouldn't want anyone to think this is a a reaction from a neighborhood of not in my neighborhood that that's the furthest from the truth because those neighbors really use that park and love it uh and someday we like to get the pond back up to speed so in the winter kids can ice skate and all that but uh it, it, as you saw uh, i think it was saturday or sunday afternoon i was over there um it was, it was packed right it was packed okay i wonder uh, i'm sorry i wonder would it be possible for cyclists to park somewhere else like say the community center or somewhere around there and then maybe promote that like say park there and then you can ride up avon follow all the rules of the road of course um, that might alleviate some of it because i i mean i know i i ride from four or five miles away because i don't want to i don't like to drive to ride or you know but also the parking is an issue so so Daniel, I think that's a, um, a great suggestion and that's something that we can promote. Uh, also, Alan, I wanted you to know that um, I talked through that parking area with Kevin uh, Skurlark, our maintenance supervisor a little bit. And at one time they looked at adding additional parking spaces, reconfiguring that to uh, permit more cars. We intend to take a look at that um, likely not until next week, um, but we'll look at that as well. Um, that's not something that can be done 
in-house with EPW or with um, park maintenance as far as uh, leveling and filling that and um, asphalting it, if that's the way we want to go. Uh, Sunday, and we've had such great weather, which and it's great to see all these people out. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a little congested. One more thing about cells and strouds, you know, with with the Baileys bringing people from town or from out of town in, it always was my hope that there would be more people riding, checking out the other trails, and I think that'll happen. So, it, yeah, it's good that you guys have that on your radar because it seems like it's just going to get more and more potentially so just my thoughts i think that's a really good point daniel and i think a lot of people in athens are hoping that the bailey's trail will actually encourage people to come into athens you know to spend a little money to help our our limping economy but uh that's a really good thing to consider and we should be prepared for that for all of our local trails All right, moving on to the task force. Yeah, if it's okay, I mean, I can report on it now if you prefer, or I can report on it with my staff report. What's what's the board's preference? Up to you. You wanna consolidate it all in your report? I will, I'll do it now. Okay. So, as you know, um, put together a task force um, task force included Aaron Helms, program specialist as a staff liaison, uh, volunteers, Boone Troyer, uh, community member Elizabeth Stenoff, um, she's I think with Mom and Friends Group, uh, Kathy Straley, and Shauna. I had hoped that Shauna would be here to report, report out, um, but I'll give you what I have uh, survey. What my, my charge and, and, and hope was that we'd make quick work of it, um, try to identify needs and gaps in the community um, within the realm of resources that we have in recreation and parks um, to try and fill the need and gaps uh, for youth services. And, um, Boone Troyer worked as a uh, program specialist at one time. Kathy Straley was a preschool teacher at one time. Um, Elizabeth Stenoff has been pretty active in the community. And of course, um, we pulled Shauna in. She, she works with um, youth sports organizations, soccer, uh, soccer organizations. So with that said, um, I kind of gave them the green light and got out of the way. Um, let them do what they do. They put out a survey uh, that was posted on social media, uh, was posted for seven days. Uh, additionally, the survey was emailed to all child care program participants that we've had. Um, results were we got uh, 47 completed surveys from social media and 51 completed surveys from uh, our participants. Um, the noted resor results, uh, majority are looking for programming for elementary to preschool age children, really looking for an outlet for schoolwork, childcare, and socializing. Uh, majority are looking at morning hours, but also indicated really any time would work. Uh, and their comfort level with COVID levels, at level one and two, they still seem comfortable uh, while at level three and four, there was a, um, they saw a large decline in interest and participation. 50-50 um, split on those that prefer the one to nine ratio, uh, and that being staff member uh, and, and number of participants. Um, 
majority said that they would pay more so that they could have a smaller ratio. Um, and and as I read through that, one of the, one of the things I caution is um, what our social responsibility is as far as social, social equity for those that can pay and those that can't pay and um, uh, leveraging that uh, and finding a way to do that. So um, that'll be something I talk with the task force more about when we meet. Uh, let's see, programming ideas and, and recommendations, take your kid to work or some variation. Uh, adults are looking to be able to um, drop in with their children and have their children do an activity and they work on location remotely, uh, which I, I found interesting and I actually like that, having parents on site. Um, children could work on school work, utilize Wi-Fi, partake in activities provided by staff. Um, those activities would be similar to what the experience would be in their specials classes like PE, art, and music. Uh, it's a little bit like Child Watch, but we would promote it differently. Um, the thought is to offer a four-hour time block on certain days and allow our users to reverse, reserve their time in two-hour time blocks. Uh, we would recommend a punch card uh, because we thought that would work best for the program rather than a full registration. Do full registrations, we get into refunds. If levels changes, punch card allows us to, to go day by day, week by week. And that was something that I asked them to consider. Um, we learned that lesson in camp, try to mitigate the refund risk uh, and be revenue neutral or revenue positive. Um, Another thought was, or recommendation was morning movie, created to our time block in the morning, allow parents to drop child off um, for a movie. Um, creating social distancing in separate spaces is of course, um, parents could work on site or off site. Um, and then another recommendation was nature time, outdoor setting, uh, one to two hour time blocks. Um, so, Based on the survey results, uh, responses mostly indicated simply to give parents a break so they can get work done and knowing their child is in a supervised and safe environment, um, which I feel like we do fairly well um, and are, have, have managed to continually improve as far as COVID, COVID to put things in place, um, whether it be social distancing and knowing our ratios to sanitizing. Um, so right now, um, with the need for preschool age, we're offering Start Smart and Dance for this age group. Um, my thought is that in January, we consider resuming preschool programming. That was, that was the intent and that was a recommendation from the last pro, from, from the program specialist over childcare to consider um, preschool programming starting in January. Um, Art Hour, Art Option, uh, I'd like to see it at Arts West and the Community Center that offers um, that component, um, East and West, which I think we need to look at. Um, that's it, any questions? Yeah, uh, before we get too far down the road with this, I think uh, it's probably, <laughs> probably past time, but certainly need to now. We need to talk with the Athens City School System because many of the things that came out of that report would not jive with the current schedule. Uh, I uh, very intimately involved with six children, two in kindergarten, one in second grade, one in fourth grade, and one in sixth grade. And depending on the school and depending on the grade, it is anything from very regimented time-wise to wide open. Um, so, you talk about phys ed, art, and music, and I wish we would quit using the term specials. And I say that strongly and with all sincerity, because they are not specials. They're an integral part of the curriculum. Um, but uh, I know, for example, that uh, a couple of the kids have art or phys ed or music at a specific time on a specific day. 
So before we make too many plans in isolation, I think it'd be wise to talk with either the curriculum director or the superintendent or at least the three elementary school principals to see how uh, this program might align with the schooling because they're committed to online schooling at least through the end of this nine weeks. And based on the numbers now that Ohio University is back in session starting Monday for 7,700 kids, I don't expect them to go back uh, uh, this semester. Okay, I'll, I'll have that conversation um, with the task force. Uh, I do wanna thank that group for putting in the time um, and effort to bring these things forward, but good feedback, Alan, and we'll collaborate and work together on it. Travis. Uh, uh, just out of curiosity and just for knowing more information, um, I'm not too familiar uh, with the, the, the school system. Alan, could you tell me a little bit more about that term, specials? Somehow in public education uh, in the last 30 years, educational leaves has developed the word specials and it refers to the arts, music, phys ed. And, and I'm speaking personally, but obviously you can tell by the tone of my voice and the expression of my face, I feel very strongly about this because I, I would wager Travis like you, I think those are an integral part of the curriculum Sadly, when we label something as special, it also gets the label of extra. And you know what extra means? And I see Beth nodding over there. Extra things are the first things to get cut. And I've worked with school districts, hundreds of school districts in 30 states, and I've watched budget cuts devastate what once were great music, art, drama, dance, uh, phys ed programs, and it happens because we've labeled them as special or something extra. So I, I just, it, it's just one of those words I don't use and, and, and I've encouraged many people not to use, but it's, it's inbred in the public education system. Everybody calls it specials, like they call their children kiddos. So anyway, that's, that's the best answer I could give you. So I, I had no idea. Um, so thank you for that. Is it, yeah. I have a question, Alan, is it elective or is it part of the curriculum? At the elementary level, there are state standards that you have to take uh, X number of minutes per uh, either grading period, semester, or whatever in those three areas, physical education, art, and music. And sadly, many districts, maybe most, but I'll use the term many, do just the minimum. It's gotten so crazy at the high school level, we are now giving people phys ed credit for things other than attending a phys ed class. And one of the problems with that is phys ed is one of the few classes that students of all ability levels, and I mean uh, academic ability levels, are all mixed in the same classroom. There are many, many, many famous stories of when Joe Burrow was in junior high that he always picked the least amongst his classmates to be on his team. Well, under the new rules, because Joe played football, he didn't have to take phys ed. He was exempt from it because he played a sport. So uh, yes, there are state standards and then districts choose it. In Illinois at one time, every kid had to take phys ed from kindergarten through 12th grade, but that's been slashed too. That's all I have on the task force report. I'll um, take your feedback and we will discuss that when I meet with the task force. Sounds good. Alan, in the interest of time, I won't ask your opinions on kiddos, and we'll just keep on moving, but <laughs> I feel like they're the same. <laughs> well, it's tough to call a sixth grader a kiddo. <laughs> just, All right, moving to, next, to new business uh, is our board retreat. Um, we discussed this a little bit last time. Uh, we agreed to have a mid-November um, retreat. I don't know that we have solidified a date though. Terry, do you, is that on a calendar or? Um, no, it's not, but I have a recommendation um, and that would be November 20th. That may have come up. Somebody may have suggested that at the last meeting, um, but it's a Friday and it's a Friday before the holiday. Um, I can tell you that I've invited Kathy Heck 
to the meeting. Um, I think the mayor indicated that uh, a November meeting would be best because we would have a better idea of where we're at budget wise. And um, Kathy's agreed to attend. Um, I've given her a tentative date of I think the, the 20th. So if, if that can work, um, do we I now have a commitment on the 20th. You do? I do from eight until 3.30 or four. They're not quite sure what time it will end. Sorry. I didn't have that last time we met, but it's something sure. I have to attend. The 19th, I mean, that would be our, our, normal, um, our normal advisory board. I hate to be the difficult one, but my commitment <laughs> is the 19th and the 20th. I'm good on the 18th. <laughs> I'm open then. But if, you know, if I'm the only one that can't be there, go ahead. But I just can't do it on those days. And were we looking also just like last year to be during the day? I think we did um, mid morning through lunch. I don't, if I'm not mistaken. And that depends on the board's comfort level. And I think where we're at um, as, a, as a county, uh, as, as far as uh, COVID goes, um, I feel like we could create the space for distancing and, and um, you know, mitigate risk and, and those things, but um, I'll look for feedback as far as what, what the board's comfort level is. Uh, for what it's worth, the Alexander School Board is meeting in person and their meetings have gotten to be four and five hours long and they're in a big U-shape with everyone at their own six or eight foot table. I prefer that face-to-face -face every now and then. I, I, I need that, um, but that's that's just me. I think my initial question was more just around, I guess, the timing of it. Um, I don't know. I don't know how people feel about being in person or not, and just whether that's something they want to share openly in here or just maybe we kind of collect that info on the side to see where we're at and come together. It's two, it's two months out and for what it's worth the last seven days our average number of COVID cases in Athens County is down from 15 a day to 12. So two months who knows. I mean if it's 50 a day I think yeah, we're gonna look at each other by Zoom. Yeah and here comes 7,000 more people on this weekend, so. But, but if we're down to like we were from 814 to 820, we had 0. 0.71 cases a day. Yeah. In the county, not even one a day. So yeah. let's, um, let's try to just solidify a date and maybe the times and be flexible whether we're gonna be kind of in person or, or virtual. Um, Daniel? I got one thing. I'm immersed in school with four kids, so from eight until 2.33. Uh, I can maybe make something work special on a day, but that's just kind of where I'm at right now. Okay. Could, could we go after your school, Daniel, instead of having lunch? Have yeah, I'd be fine with that. Meeting and light dinner? Yeah, that's fine with me, and you know, I, as of right now, I'd be okay with the in-person. Of course, as we know, things can change, but um, yeah, that, that would work. So I would suggest maybe that we just look at an extended time on the 19th, which is already our scheduled meeting time. Like, like going four to eight or something like that, Mark? Yeah, whatever we think we need. I think as we flesh out the agenda too, we can see how much time we actually need. But Are you in town, Beth, or are you away? I will be in town on the 19th and 20th, but I've now been asked to attend this two-day webinar thing for city council members from all over the Midwest. And... I believe the time is eight to eight to four on the 19th. 
and then they're not quite sure how it'll be how long it will last on the 20th but it also starts at eight in the morning so back to mark's point about our normal time and extending the hours what if we started like at uh 4 30 on the 19th and go to whatever time the group thinks uh out of time i think i could do that depending on this thing and if it goes late i might have to enter a bit late but yeah i, I think i could do it thanks alan for trying to fit me in yeah, if you're out of town, it'll be a different story. But if you're in town, pull yeah, it I'll off. be in town. I'll be uh, on my computer all day. <laughs> so Scott just made a point: um, until ten or more people can be in the same room, we won't be meeting in person in public meetings. Um, just a good point. Um, well, how many we would have? Seven board members. You, you, Terry. Anybody that we need, like Kathy, heck, Kathy doesn't need to be there the whole time. Right, she, she could even people. remote in. Well, we could either remote in or if she had to be there, schedule people in and out. So we never have more than 10 in the room at a time. Yeah, I agree. We'll have to manage that piece. Okay. You think on the 19th, Mark? Yep, so I think we move forward with that date. Um, as we, I'm going to run off a list here of things that we talked about last time in, in terms of an agenda. Um, depending on the structure and the timing that I think we need, I think we can talk about this after we kind of flesh out the agenda, but um, whether we think we can accomplish this all in kind of one sitting, again, depending if we're in person or over the computer but um, if we need to maybe breaking it up even talking about some of this through our October meeting in preparation or even following in December but just being I think we just need to be flexible at this point and can outline what we want to accomplish and um, as we go along figure out the, the best way to kind of handle it so uh, based off of last time we had uh, revisiting the mission and vision of the department on our list reviewing uh, current year's progress, reviewing the budget, uh, acknowledging or hearing the mayor's current vision and the city's priorities, as well as revisiting council's goals. Um, and then I think this is one that I added just for our discussion or areas tonight, but discussion around our structure and our areas of improvement. When I, I think about this retreat, I kind of compartmentalize a little bit two different things. One, talking about the department itself um, and the operations and how we can best support, but then also our operations as a board um, and what our, what our function is and what we can be doing to um, best support the department. So um, I don't know if that, it's not as clean, I think, separating the two, but uh, when I think about the work that we need to do and the discussions we have, it's how do we support and then what are the other functional things we need to do as a board um, and that's where I think, you know, getting our structure and responsibilities solidified, um, how we work through goals um, and whether we um, join in on department committees or things to, to best support uh, what's happening. So that's what we have currently um, on our agenda. Are there any other thoughts or ideas that we do not have on there that we should? Or anybody view these discussions differently than I just outlined? Thanks, Scott. Hearing none. Well, I guess I have one little question, but if you disagree, feel free to say so, Terry or Mark or anybody. Um, would it make sense to discuss any kind of kids in the community that we're not really reaching out to? Um, I don't know, the Hope Apartments are so close to the community center. Do we do anything special with those low income children or, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not appropriate for the department to focus on certain, certain little groups of people, but I just wonder if we're reaching out to low income children in Athens or in the county. So at, at one time, um, we, we scholarship kids now um, that can't afford to, to participate, whether it's summer camp um, or really in a, any of our programs without a formal scholarship program. 
Um, as far as reaching out, um, no, we're not doing that. Uh, at one time, and ongoing, we've had the conversation about, um, you know, serving areas beyond Athens um, that don't have recreation programs and what that might look like. Is it a mobile rec unit and, you know, that, that um, that we provide and the county may provide staffing for that. I've had a loose conversation with Jesse Powers about that. Um, and I can tell you that was pre-COVID um, because there are areas that don't have, you know, recreation departments um, and we've got equipment. I've had the uh, old fire trailer donated uh, to our department with the intent that we convert that into a mobile rec unit. Um, we just haven't made any, any headway with it. So it's there, um, you know, it's been on the radar. It's definitely in our heart um, as we look at um, who we're serving and how we're serving. Uh, I know there's a couple schools of thought as far as, you know, our resources and um, how we provide and allocate those to, to areas outside of Athens. Um, I personally am advocate of um, serving kids that necessarily wouldn't have opportunities. So however I find a way to do that, um, I'll try and do that. Thank you. Thank and you I know for, it. I'm sure it's much more challenging during the whole COVID situation. You know, and Beth, I mean, if you've got specific groups um, in, in mind that I may not be aware of, uh, absolutely, when we're planning for whether it be, I mean, in the past, we've had Halloween activities. I know staff is looking at something we can do virtually or remotely um, during, the, um, during the holidays. Uh, and we've started that conversation. So, um, you know, well, as a board, as a department, I mean, even adopting families um, or kids during the holidays or providing gift cards, um, we can surely um, talk more about that. I think that could be great. Off the top of my head, I would think Hope Apartments, because it's so nearby and a, an interesting group to reach out to might be the children at the Mill Street Apartments who are from the international families because their families not, might not be too aware of some of the things that are going on except soccer. They're probably better at soccer than we are. But um, they might be hearing at school, you know, about all the fun things the other kids are doing. And it, it just might be interesting just to send the invitation, sure. you know? Sure. And the parents might not go for it, but maybe they'd just like to be asked, you know, right. invited. Absolutely. But everybody could probably think of some groups that wouldn't occur to me, just a thought. I wrote it down. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thanks for the good explanation. The other uh, assignment I wanted to throw out tonight is related to that retreat. We had talked right before uh, COVID took off about doing that self-assessment that Terry also sent out earlier this afternoon. Um, and I think if we can revisit that and have all of the board members uh, go through, it's just kind of a checkbox evaluating um, how you think we're, we are as a board and how informed we are as it relates to the department's activities and our structure and how we're operating, all that type of thing. Um, I think it would be beneficial leading up to that retreat uh, and for us to kind of set some goals for next year too, to continue to refine and um, help us move forward in a coherent way. So again, on that one, if we can maybe include that with, um, the earlier assignment um, and have that in the next couple weeks. I'll compile it. Um, we can share out and create some some discussion around that for our retreat as well. Mark, I'm looking at this. I printed out today. Uh, is this uh, edible? Ed not edible? I would not suggest. <laughs> no, is it editable? In other words, uh, is this a document some format yes. I can just go in and check the appropriate box and save it and email it to you? Yep. And I okay. added a comment section for you too. If, if you don't even, there's some things on there you may be unsure what it even refers to. Um, yeah, just go ahead and mark it up and 
send it in. Okay. All right. And Brandon put in the chat um, about last year's retreat, just that it was nice to have department heads and program specialists there. I would agree. Uh, so I don't know if there's a way of including them in this process and that retreat. That, I agree. I thought that was a, a, a good ad. He also put in there that I, he thinks what I think the agenda that I listed off was about four hours of work. I don't know if there's additional commentary that you want to add to that. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't, can you guys hear me? I know my, my internet's kind of weird. Uh, I mean, we've been talking about that since last year, you know, the responsibility. So I think it's, it's pretty big, you know, so I don't want to add too much to our retreat because I think it's, you know, important to nail it down. But the fact that it's been, you know, it's not been finalized makes me think that it's a large thing. So adding anything else, and that's why I said it's four hours of work. I feel like with, you know, the department and the board's responsibility, I just feel like that'll be more than enough, you know, to tackle. So, because I think last time we did the mission, and all those things, plus talking with all the department heads and everything like that, it's, it's, you know, which is great, but, you know, if we're just touching everything in a little bit of way, we don't make a lot of progress, but if we spend all that time on, I think the board, uh, that'll help us, you know, really help Terry and everybody else in the department, so. Yeah, I agree, good point. So I Mark, um, when you, uh, you mentioned budget as part of that agenda, so when you, um, when you're talking about the budget, are you looking at at that as an action item or just a reporting? I, well, I thought, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I would think it's more of a reporting, kind of an update on status and things, not necessarily just for our awareness more so, but Terry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just to add to that, Travis, um, having Kathy there to, to, to report on how the budget works, um, I think going into 2021, we're going to be faced with some different challenges um, and having her report out on what that might look like. Um, it's up to me and us to determine um, how we set those priorities based on the information she provides. Um, but um, I do know that typically, I spoke with Kathy today, typically um, we're starting to talk budget 2021 um, and um, we haven't done that yet. I'm hopeful that there'll be some information that comes out in our department head meeting on Monday. I start to get anxious, um, <laughs> you know, this, this time of year and, and want to think through what it looks like in planning and so on and so forth. But, you know, we're, we're in a different, we're in a different situation. So um, I have a tendency to, to reach out to the auditor every now and then so she can just um, put me at ease a little bit. But that's when I thought it'd be great if she could attend uh, our board retreat and just answer questions and talk through um, the process. And um, so that, that's my thought. Terry, do you anticipate having budget numbers by the, uh, at least preliminary budget numbers by the 19th of uh, November? Uh, I think they'll have a good gauge. And, and if we go back to the last meeting, the mayor indicated that, that um, you know, he thought we would, would have a good idea of where we stood in November. So that's kind of what I'm basing that on. Um, I didn't ask that specific question today when I spoke with Kathy. Um, so... Because the reason I ask, uh, at least in budget meetings I've been in for the last 40 years, it really helps the conversation if uh, participants in the meeting have those numbers in advance that they can take a look at so they can ask appropriate questions. So if we could get something to the board, um, I don't know, a week out from the meeting, would you think that would be helpful? Plenty of time. Okay. I'll make, I'll make that request. All right, sounds good. Our next up, um, just an announcement or acknowledgement, uh, Nick Palmer uh, is no longer uh, part of the board. So there'll be, there's a vacancy and we'll be, uh, I guess, looking for a replacement at some point here in the future. Uh, but just wanted to let folks know that uh, he's no longer part of, uh, of the board and certainly appreciate 
his service and his contributions while he's been while he's been with us. So. Beth, since you're the city council liaison to this committee, um, can we cast a wide net to <laughs> fill this position? I was just thinking we should do that too, but to be honest, at city council, we usually don't announce position openings on city uh, advisory boards and commissions. We just announce once someone is selected for them. But, but this I would be the time to change that that practice. Well, yeah, that can be trickier to do than you might imagine in some cases. But um, I'd be happy just as an inv individual to spread the word on my own Facebook page and things like that. Could, could we not put it on the uh, Arts, Parks, and Recreation uh, landing page? Oh, that's a good idea. And could we not put it on the city landing page? That I don't know, but maybe I mean, Legally, there's absolutely no reason we can't do that. Mm. And, I, and I think it, it behooves this community that all interested people have an opportunity to throw their hat in the ring. That's all I got on this thing. I threw my hat in the ring about 10 years ago. I would agree. I think it's good. And I think casting a, a wide net is really smart. Is there a certain kind of person we'd be looking for to replace Nick Palmer? Like, do we need, he, I don't remember, was he more of a sports guy or an arts guy or Mark, do you know, is, is there a certain kind of individual we'd most be interested in finding? Uh, I'm hesitant to say that there's a particular kind of individual we're looking for. I think Nick's passion, his interest was certainly in the youth sports realm. Um, but in terms of kind of putting that categorization of we're looking for a X person, I think that might be actually detrimental to kind of the suggestion that Al's making. Okay. Uh, Are would... there any certain skills that we feel like we're lacking on the board that we might want to attempt to fill or are we good? Yeah, somebody's got a deep pocketbook. <laughs> yeah. Fundraising development. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would, I would, the, uh, I would like to look for two characteristics, and, and I think we've got some people that, that, that fulfill both of these. One, I'd like to look for some creative problem solvers, and I would like to look for people who are willing to commit the time, like the members of this board have. Um, th those would be two of the things I would really like to look for. Those and that could be a wide variety of people. Yes, it could. And, and I think I mentioned to Terry, and I'm not saying, I'm not advocating this, but at one time, this board always had somebody on it from the Athens City School System. Hmm. Um, you know, just for example, the task force, we're talking about a potential major program here, and, and, and we don't have anyone from that, that, that constituency sitting at the table, but one time we did. Because at one time, the Athens City School System's athletic department and this department worked very closely together in terms of shared resources as much anymore. So anyway, create problem solver and somebody can commit to putting in the time and effort, what I'd like to see. And I think in the current context too, and not that anybody needs to shed any tears, but my term, I've run out of my term extension, so I'll be done at the beginning of January. So there's, uh, with Nick's position and mine coming up, I mean, considering that as a kind of together of, kind of what the future of the board looks like, but. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right, Beth. Brandon has in here, aren't the appointees brought forth by the mayor? I agree should we, we should cast a wide net, but who will tackle that vetting process? Change my name so I can be a member again. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Well, I, maybe maybe it's the mayor and Beth that, that have that conversation. Not to give you any more work on top of the 19th and 20th of November, but if she's the liaison for council, which is the legislative part, and the mayor is certainly the head of the administrative part. Perhaps the two of them could, uh, if presented with a pile of candidates, can uh, vet them. I, and, 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 and you know, Terry might very well be part of that, that group. If people would like me to help, I'm happy to. I, I don't know if everybody would be comfortable with, like, the city controlling it, but um, I'd be happy to be part of a group or something. Sure. <laughs> I think the big benefit is just that it, it provides the opportunity for people that we may not think of or that have different perspectives that we don't 
uh, maybe stereotypically categorized as somebody being interested um, in this work. So uh, I like the idea of at least opening that door. Okay. So what do people need to do if they're interested? What, what's their next step? It's a great I have to send a letter of uh, interest to the mayor. The mayor, not That's to it. Terry. I'm sorry? Not to tear, not to Terry, just to no, the mayor. I, I the mayor appoints. I okay. To the mayor. All right. But it's the term. But as it, in terms of, you know, once the mayor gets all these, who he includes in that decision making process. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I'd like to see a couple couple people uh, sit at the table with him. And yeah, I, I'd, I'd be happy to be at that table if you'd like, and maybe somebody else from this committee could as well. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brandon, you're nodding your head. Would you like to be there? Cool. Do we Travis, know Daniel, if the... Mark, I hope you don't mind. Alan, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Brandon was the most enthusiastic there. My car doesn't look as nice as his. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do we know if the mayor, if he has someone in mind already? Because, um, and I know he just, he asked me randomly on passing on the street and then I got a letter. <laughs> I don't know. I certainly can't speak for him, but I would doubt it. I think usually he likes to see those suggestions come up from the committees rather than coming top down. Fair question, but I, I don't, I would be surprised if he has somebody in mind. I don't think you're a random, Travis. <laughs> you think he does have some in mind already? No, oh, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I just, just don't so think he randomly in. asked Travis. I think the opportunity was presented itself at the right time. Yeah, okay. Well, you were a great choice, Travis. But um, yeah, I think with all Certainly the different is. city commissions and boards, that would just be too much to figure out, you know, for one person. So there's something like 22 of them. So, um, yeah. Very good. All right, uh, Terry, APR department staff report. Staff the report. <laughs> I will go through it as quickly as I can. And then if you have any questions, I'm open to that. Uh, I like to report, report first on personnel. Um, we still have four full-time positions uh, that are not filled. We are, uh, we're making our way um, and, and doing what we can. Uh, Facility operations manager position is not filled. Uh, I anticipate a January 1, 2021. Uh, that'll be part of my conversation with Tom Pyle tomorrow. Head landscaper position is not filled. Uh, if it's possible, I'd like that to be filled as soon as possible, even this year. We're gonna have snow removal um, and a number of other things uh, in the uptown area and at cemeteries that we're going to need that support and uh, I'm keeping Kevin together, but, but I've got to get him some support. Um, program specialist as announced, um, re-employed date for Arts West program specialist to be determined. Um, I should know more on that early next week. Uh, and the other program specialist, January, 2021, um, got six, part-time positions that have not been filled, groundskeepers for uptown cemeteries and events co coordinator, three of those positions at Arts West. Um, I can say that um, our staff is doing everything they can to pick up additional responsibilities and pull together as a team to keep things moving and to provide the services um, that, uh, that we can, as well as maintain parks. Um, that's it on personnel. Um, parks, uh, park maintenance is continuing with routine uh, mowing and maintenance of parks. Uh, that's slowing down a bit, but not as quickly as we had hoped. So, um, uh, Come on, cold weather, but then we get into snow removal. Uh, and fall and winter projects. Um, some of those projects that they're working on now are the Storybook Trail, installing that at Sells Park. Um, that will be completed by October 2nd. 
Uh, I know they're going in tomorrow to dig the holes, comb that area off, and then they'll, um, they'll do the install of the kiosk, 17 kiosk. Um, swing set install um, at West State Street. I had hoped that that would be in. Um, we're shooting for mid-October, and um, Kevin confirmed that he was comfortable, comfortable with that date. Uh, pavilions and restroom doors have been painted, contracted that out. Um, courts, goals, and lines have been repainted on the park side. Um, got heavy use of the tennis and pickleball courts. Um, we've added a pickleball court uh, in the, uh, the hockey rink behind the center. Um, and we've also um, opened our courts by reservation in the facility itself. Um, one to two people, two people if it's from the same family, and then the pickleball courts as well. Uh, other miscellaneous projects. Um, we've had issue, a, a real issue as has we have, uh, we've had all over the city with um, graffiti and being tagged. Uh, we had 20 volunteers come in Saturday, last Saturday. They did a great job. Um, Leaf Wakefield and Zach Powell led that charge and um, cleaned it up, looked beautiful. We were tagged that, that weekend. So we're looking at, you know, other things that we can do, but um, we've got another date scheduled for volunteers to come together. And the thought is that these, the, these groups of volunteers, they advocate for, um, you know, keeping the skate park safe and clean and graffiti free. So um, we're trying to, to work that plan. Hey, I, Daniel. I happened to see that and stop by and it was really cool. Yeah. There was more people there than I'd seen in a long time. Uh, Moss Miller, uh, my ex coworker, Tim Kirkendall, uh, they were Jeb Branner. There was a lot of people that I knew down there. So it's good to hear they're going to do it again. How I asked Moss how the word got out and he said it was just via text a few days before. Um, any, any plans on how to, how that word's going to get out for the next time or. Yeah, we can, we'll push that out. Um, and I do think that we did push out the cleanup. Um, but again, Leaf and Zach led that charge. Um, our, our maintenance staff and custodian, um, we provided the elephant's knot and, uh, which is pricey. Uh, it, it's, it's really pricey. Um, but it works. And uh, so it was a collaborative effort. I think the more we put that pop, get that positive energy in that space that we can marginalize, um, you know, some of the, the tagging and graffiti. I know at one time um, there was someone from APD that took the lead on a graffiti task force, worked closely with Andrew. Um, that has since resolved. But I've had the conversation with Captain Harvey. Um, they're short staffed right now, but I'd like to revisit that and have a graffiti task force. Um, well, that was a that was a nice positive thing. I I felt like there was a lot of young kids out there that had these adults that were doing this, and they could look up to them. So um, I'm not really in the skating or BMX scene, but I thought it was pretty neat. So that was nice. Good, thanks. So I'll, um, I think the October date is the third week, third Saturday in October. I think that's what we agreed to. After that, the water shuts off. We wanted to do three dates, um, but uh, yeah, the October date is, it is the third Saturday. Um, and we'll make sure that's out on our um, social media and we can even put it on the city website. I'll get with Scott and Ryan and make that happen. Uh, Gary, you mentioned cemeteries. Two questions. How many cemeteries are we responsible for maintaining? And do we have any idea what the acreage of the, that cemetery or cemeteries is or are? So we have two cemeteries that we maintain. Um, and I don't have the acreage. Um, 
I'll go back to January when we took took the lands piece, not knowing that um, you know we'd be in COVID type situation and not able to to fill positions. Uh, and we're learning a lot about you know as as we go what it is we do. Um, our park maintenance crew um, they actually dig the grave for cremations, not necessarily for um, for other burials, um, but there's a lot of things that, that we didn't know. Um, and we, um, we've got, at the time we had two part-timers that took care of the cemeteries with the support of the head landscaper in another part-time position. Um, cemeteries are unique because you know, because of the headstones and the delicacy there with, with, you know, some of that when we're mowing or weed eating. Um, yeah, uh, but I, I'll get the acreage for you, um, Alan. We, um, one of the positions, uh, we had an employee pass away. So there's been some unexpected things that were just out of our, you know, COVID. Um, death, those things are out of our control. Um, so we're, we're pulling staff as we can. Again, um, you know, we operate under a union contract with, with our full-time uh, maintenance employees, um, but we're making it work. Kevin's, you know, Kevin's doing everything he can. That's a conversation I'm gonna have with Tom tomorrow about um, filling those positions because we will move right into, um, you know, uh, leaves in the park as well as snow removal in, in those areas as well. Thanks, Terry. Re the reason I ask, and I don't think most people know that, that, that cities, or in some cases, cities are responsible for those cemeteries where X number of years ago they weren't. And I believe there was a change in Ohio law that basically dropped those in our lap. And it, it's, it's time consuming and labor intensive. And uh, when we're looking at staffing levels and things like that, I know there's some people that's a cemetery, but it's a responsibility that, uh, that, that we're um, entrusted with and charged with. And, and we need to get, get those folks some help because it is extremely time consuming to do all the weed whopping and mowing around all of those headstones. Let's see. Uh... At Arts West, um, the custodians have been there deep cleaning, floor to ceiling from the lights down. Um, stage access, the ramp, uh, that project should be completed sometime in November by facilities. Um, I think you'll recall where we had a temporary ramp that we used uh, for access for stage accessibility. Um, it's on our radar to remove those front bushes. The timing of that, um, you know, do we remove them this year and go back in with a landscape plan in, in the spring? Um, that's our thought. Uh, looking at pressure washing the building and, and painting the foundation um, as well. Uh, the mayor's made a commitment of uh, phase two CARES Act money to upgrade the connectivity uh, for fiber, for streaming virtual program capabilities. Uh, I saw a, a very rough estimate on that of $30,000. And uh, David Dudding, our IT person, is, um, is, is moving that forward. Again, I'll know more on the status of that and what that looks like, uh, hopefully after our department head meeting on Monday. Uh, from a programming standpoint, um, we hosted, uh, Scott and Ryan, thank you, uh, the Spoken and Heard event with Ohio Poet Laureate Carrie Gunter Seymour. That was held Thursday, September 19th. Uh, that's a monthly series. Uh, recreation from the recreation side, Start Smart programs. I mentioned that um, those programs are full. Those are outdoor programs. Uh, soccer is in progress, and football starts this Saturday. Um, I mentioned the indoor courts. Uh, 
membership monthly promotion, October is fall into fitness. We're doing discount 30 day membership uh, for $25, three month membership for $65. I've got those numbers on membership if anybody's interested in, in what we've done uh, through the month of September. Um, and then uh, I mentioned that I spoke with Kathy just about 2020 budget, our status. Um, there was no direction for any more cuts. Uh, so we may good, be good for the, the rest of the year. Um, but we are not bringing in any revenue at Arts West. Um, community center is very minimal. Uh, and pay, payroll continues to be our big, biz, biggest expense. So, but we're moving along and, 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 and we're learning from it. So um, it's good. We'll get through it with your support. Sounds good. Any questions or anything else for the good of the order? I had a, a request, simple request from a community member. Uh, and, and the request was, would it be possible near the restrooms uh, at the Walmart soccer fields to install bike racks? Uh, this came directly from a theft. There was a Athens Middle School student practicing soccer with his friends had leaned his uh, bike up against uh, a tree on the river side of the bike path and someone literally stole his Trex bike while they were practicing. And the request was, uh, would it be possible to install some bike racks there so that kids who do ride their bikes to practice uh, or those who ride their bikes to watch practices would have a safe place to uh, secure their, their bikes. So um, we do have one bike rack there. We can look at it, installing additional bike racks. Um, my thought as we install and replace bike racks is that we go with uh, bike racks similar to the theme at the pool. Maybe not um, with all the colors, but you know, um, green, blue, in, in, in cert certain areas. Um, but yeah, we can look at that. Okay. But there is one there. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a look. I couldn't find it, so I must have looked in the wrong spot. It, up near the restrooms, Alan? Yeah. I, can't, I parked there and came up over the hill to the restrooms and looked left and looked right, and I, I didn't see one. But again, that doesn't mean I couldn't, you know. Okay. The, one other point there are some trees there, and just from someone that did commute for a long time, that's what I'd look for something like that. So, I mean, there is something there, but it's always good to have more bicycle okay. racks too. And real quick, since we're talking about that area, Daniel, I think you brought it up last, um, last meeting, uh, the area behind Lowe's. I've been in conversation with the manager at Lowe's as far as cleaning that up. Um, and they, he is supposed to get back to me. He, uh, they have service day or cleanup day for their employees. Um, he was proposing that to other managers and he assured me that they would do a cleanup day in October. Uh, I'll follow up with that probably next week to see where they're at with that and when that will happen. Uh, there are benches and flower planters that um, are not being kept up and the thought is to remove those. I'd like if we can those 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 planters um, to reuse those, relocate those uh, and use them for seniors. Um, I'll be working with the senior center to determine where might be the best place to put those um, but they're the type of planter that are that's raised so seniors would not have to to bend over um, and kneel um, as you would in some of our community gardens. So that's my thought there. I'll keep you posted, but um, we've had APD out there looking at that. Code's been out there and uh, I reached out to the manager to, to work with him to, uh, to get that area cleaned up. Yeah, every time it floods, those planters go floating away. Uh, but that's, that's, that's not a good place to have them. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. it wasn't long after they put that in that I think it flooded and it just seemed like it was doomed from yeah, the beginning, right. which right. I like that idea of having that area. I mean, for workers or just anybody that would want to be outside. When it was, inst when it was, uh, installed. Um, it was a collaborative effort with this department and a former manager at Lowe's. Uh, I can't find any sort of agreement as to who would be responsible for what. Um, and that's been part of the discussion um, with, with the manager. So uh, we're working through that. I'll keep you posted. That's all I have. All right, anything else from the group? Oh, one more thing. Hmm? I've been continuing to clean up invasives out of Camp Rotan. So if you guys ever get over this way to the south side, come check it out. It's mostly autumn olive. Um, I'm trying to get it now before it fruits. And a lot of it is, but that'll keep the spreading down. Uh, eventually need to dig out the roots, but for right now I'm cutting it down. There's a lot of garlic mustard in there that would be, it'd be nice if to get people in there to help, but that's my little pet project for the city that I've been working on, so. Thanks for that, Daniel. Um, I was out there probably two weeks ago, walked it with Kevin and Chris Nisley. Um, and on that note, I've reached out to EPW to do a leak test. Uh, we've got a water line that runs through there that has a leak. Um, so we have no water to the cabin or those spigots. Um, so trying to uh, get the leak test done internally and then um, just determine the uh, trail improvements access um, safe access. Yeah. Uh, those stairs and get pulling that those some of those stairs and rebar out and old scout projects, um, of course, with some sensitivity because uh, there's some history there with the scout projects. Yeah, so. I I point out the rebar to my daughters every time. They're like, I know, I know, it's there, but it's some. I think probably yeah. next time I'm there's a few I'm just gonna take out because we've got it. It's just rebar that you can't see very well it'd be easy to trip and fall down the steps so yeah yeah we've got to we've got to um uh, we've got to move on that so um just wanted to to make you aware of that but thanks for your work out there oh yeah i love it it's it's rewarding those are my piles if you saw them so. <laughs> we saw <Yeah. laughs> all right everybody we've got uh two assignments Review the board responsibilities, provide edits, send those back, as well as the self-assessment uh, for the board. And with that, I will make the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Al. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>